Hello and welcome to the Wisdom Factory, the series Conscious Living, Conscious Dying, which I am doing in honor of my husband, Mark Davenport, who was a co-host with me in the Wisdom Factory. Today, we want to talk about living on the edge. I'm here with my German guests, Harald Kastner and Ulrike Haydn, and we have already done a conversation in German, and it was so interesting, so I thought it would be better that we do it in English, although we are not native English speakers, and you might need to excuse a little bit our way of talking, but I think it's really so interesting, and you should be able to listen what they have to say. Uh, did I say that I'm Heidi and I'm living in uh, Otricoli and we in uh, in Italy in Umbria, and we have the nonprofit ParadisoIntegrale.com. And if you want to be part of it, please go and subscribe as well as for this series and for future series of the Wisdom Factory. Anyway, today living on the edge. Harald and Ulrike, would you like to first present yourself? and then say what living in the edge, on the edge, means for you. Okay, thanks Heidi for inviting us. Um, we are curious for your questions already. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's introduce ourselves, ourselves first. Uh, my name is Ulrike Heiden, I'm a life and career coach and we founded our company Integrale Praxis in 1999. And we help people bring their uh, heartful projects into life and make them work or find their ideal jobs. Yeah, actually, we did already a conversation with you in the Wisdom Factory about a business couple. No, It was in the series about relationships and where you explained a little bit how you are living together as a couple and do business together. And it was very interesting. I recommend to the people to go and see it. And I will put a link under the yeah, video. Thank you. I think it was conscious marketing or some something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Heidi, for the invitation. My name is Tarek Kastner, um, and we are really married with each other. Um, and we founded our, our company in 1999, as Ulrike said. And uh, at this time, we knew that uh, time would be precious because of uh, yeah, because of my health situation and Ulrike's way up to that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you like to talk a little bit about this health uh, situation? Because we are yeah. talking today about conscious living and how to live with you, I would say an illness, you said this is not an illness, so uh, in the German <laughs> conversation, so I'm curious how you would uh, present it today. Yeah, um, in 1994, I suffered from an illness named sarcoidosis. It's an autoimmune disease and uh, I was for about three months in, in the hospital. And uh, after finishing this, this three months, they told me um, my lifespan will be maximum two years from up to now. To, to, yeah. And um, within the three years, um, I really radically changed my way of life. Um, what I want to do, I uh, found my purpose, I found the way I can handle my illness. Um, and I'm still learning on this way till today. Um, in 98, we met. 1997, 8. <laughs> <laughs> on New Year's Eve. <laughs> on New Year's Eve, yeah. 
um, the same of 31. We met each other first and um, really, really within the next three months, we, de we decided, despite the, 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 the time frame the doctors gave me, to found a common life. We decided to, to, to marry one year later. And we also decided to work with each other to start our own company. And um, I was still confident that this, this, uh, this time frame, the thought I have, that I have, uh, won't, won't come through that, that I will survive, that I will live, that I will better my health situation. And um, I had a change in mind. I'm thinking of an ill man to a healthy man with some restrictions in my life. And so you are living today as a healthy man with some restrictions after 20 years of the diagnosis, isn't it? <laughs> Five years next year. <laughs> <laughs> Even more. So this is really, you know, inspiring because often when you hear you have a year to live and then the, the, the hope goes away and you trust in the doctors, they know better. And psychologically, it's really devastating, you know. Uh, so how did you, how did you manage to live on that edge. <laughs> Should I? Yes, of course, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's, 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 it's caring and handling with resources, caring about resources and handling them. Um, I'm not against doctors, I must say clearly. Because in, in some emergency situ situations, I still need them and I need their, their medicine. Um, but I see them as one part of the supporters I have. And um, on the other hand, I'm responsible for my life. I took the responsibility for my health and uh, tried much of the trends. I found and um, decided what will match and what won't. And um, so I, I, I created my own tool set for my health, my own training, um, my own medicine, my own additives I take, not subscribed by the doctors. And uh, sometimes it was a kind of try and error you have to 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 to, to take the courage and to, to do that. Even if you fail, I, I had also my fails, which won't work in my way. So this for me is a very difficult path because if I have to decide to take this or do this or do that, how do I know what is right for me? So how did you know what is right for you? And what sort of guidance did you have? A part of Ulrike, but Ulrike probably knew as much as you did uh, about uh, these, uh, this illness. So uh, is there somebody who, who could give you some advice or some guidance, or did you have to do it all by yourself, to, to, to risk it all by yourself? <laughs> First of all, I have an MD, uh, MD. Uh, she provides alternative medicine. Uh, she is a regular doctor, but uh, since, her, since her age of 30, I believe, uh, she, she is working alternatively. And now she is 72, I believe. And she had also a prognosis of uh, only to live for three years with, with 30 because her, her kidneys uh, were totally ruined. 
Um, the told her about transplantation, the told her about dying within one year. She's still living 41 years later, and she did the same I do. She tried and errored. It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's, um, but for me, she is, a, she, is a, she is a resource, a guideline, a guidance, um, which helps to, to avoid some of the errors she did. And on the other hand, uh, I learned some, some methods to, to use my body as an instrument. If I like something, if I don't like something in neurology, I don't know that it is pro proper pronounced in, in English. Um, kinesiology is it in German. Um, with the muscle Kinesiology, tests. I think, in English, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you do the tests you now yes. uh, and see if this is good for your body or not. Yeah. yeah I know that too. I also learned a test, a pulse test, uh, similar to, to that. Chinese medical doctors do. Um, not all of them, they, are, they, they know about uh, 250 different pulses, I think. But uh, I, just, I just know two or three. But this is also a, a, a tool of to, to, even if, if, if I want to test the substance, my body tells me over the pulse, if I like the substance, if the body likes the substance, or not. Oh, tell me more how that works. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know what my body wants and what it doesn't. <laughs> um, if the body likes the substance, he is eager to get it. So he answers with a, with a heartbeat, if you can't tell it. Uh, it is, it, is, it is a wave of, 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 of a pulse. Really, it's, the, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a harder beat than, uh, than, 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 you, than you have normally. Uh, started with, with a pause. You, you feel that you have a pause and then a beat. That's the way the body answers if the substance is, is okay. If the substance is not okay, it does nothing. So it doesn't it change. Does, it doesn't react. Okay. It doesn't react. So you mean you take the the supplement and then it happens, or only you touch it, or you how? Can is take it? It on, you can take it on your, in your hand. You can take it on your body. You, uh, you can do this test lying down to the bed. Uh, you can do this test upright. It's not. It's, it's like the kinesiologic tests. Um, That's interesting. It, it, because it's not a question of, 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 of your position. <laughs> That's very interesting. I will check that out and maybe learn it because kinesiology, do it for your, on your own is difficult, you know, to... to, to I've, I've learned it in my first phase between 94 and 98 or 97. Uh, that was the first way I, uh, I, had a, I had a really feeling for my, for my body um, and I could estimate what my body needs and what it won't need. Hmm. And um, that was my early help and I like it with all restrictions these methods in kinesiological way have, they have. Uh, I like these methods till now. But it's not the only way of decision. Okay, but uh, an important way, and I know doctors, normal doctors, who are using that too. So it's a good, mm -hmm. good tool. Okay, let's go to other tools. <laughs> belief systems, for instance. You are talking about belief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one belief system that changes everything around is uh, if you are able to think everything's possible so in every direction so it could be for for good or for bad but ev just uh, to feel that that the universe contains every possibility for you 
and uh, our consciousness is like like uh, determining the course in life and uh, if you had a different uh, consciousness like uh, some recommendations for instance um, well the main thing is you do this or that or you think this or that that means everything else is restricted every other energy is restricted um, or if you had what was the other one we had uh, not the main thing I, something like you you have to do something mm -hmm. uh, like uh, you have a diagnosis or yeah let, let's say with diagnosis and uh, that's your prognosis um, like yours uh, there are only two or three years to live mm -hmm. or like me I had a knee injury recently and the diagnosis was a torn ligament and a torn meniscus in English I don't know and uh, the, the prediction the, was yeah you have to have that operated and I, I can sit on my knee already and I can walk on gravel, on sand, on grass again. So there's no reason for an operation two months later anymore. And the thing this is, is... This is interesting. I would like to ask you what you did. You got the diagnosis and you said, okay, I have this health situation in my knee. And the doctor says to me, I have to operate. And what was going on in your mind then? You said, oh, no. Or how, how was the development of, of your decision not to do an operation? Well, the, the first thing was the, the normal thing, how to cool it, how to soothe it, uh, how to protect it. Uh, and then... Uh, I remember earlier knee injuries from skiing and, and I thought, well, that was as bad as that it's now, though it wasn't diagnosed, but it uh, turned out well without any special treatment. And then I met a colleague and he said, well, there is a manual therapy. Have a look into that. They uh, don't have any operations with uh, torn ligaments. Um, and then I looked into that, found that manual therapy that was a couple of hundred kilometers away. And, well, I thought, mm, isn't there anything closer? And moreover, I just uh, read about the ligaments, but not about the meniscus. And uh, then I asked Dr. Google and <laughs> asked, uh, well, uh, healing of meniscus without operation and that's how I found uh, a certain method and which is a treatment by a therapist a manual therapy too but the main thing also is you practice daily and you uh, stretch your fascian <laughs> right fascius. Fascius. fascius right <laughs> okay and if um, the main trouble with our way of living is that we don't exercise enough or um, weren't smooth enough anymore because we sit too much, basically. And uh, once the stress on all the muscles and, and joints gets too hard, then somewhere an injury happens. So the, the basic thing is you have to get smooth and, and wide again, and uh, then the joint can relax, and all the stem cells in the uh, knee, in this case, could be activated again, and all the stem cells are able to rebuild the previous structure. So, and one uh, doctor I consulted with this method was, uh, he said that was really worth 160 euros. He said, uh, after, 
after he got to know me in that hour and got uh, my way of thinking. And he said, well, you know, uh, the um, God, the chirurg, uh, doesn't the surgeon, do the surgeon. surgeon. Thank you. The surgeon doesn't do anything else than you can, anything other than you can do. Uh, he cuts away that piece of meniscus that uh, goes into your knee and and causes inflammation or something. And by that way of stretching, you do and uh, you you do the same thing, but you do it on your own. And you don't need someone to cut it off from the outside. So, so what I'm hearing that both of you have this approach to take over responsibility for the uh, illness, not in the way of saying, oh, I am to blame because I did that or I did that and maybe I have failed somewhere else and blah, 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 blah. And you get a, <clears throat> a head like this because you feel guilty for your own illness, not in that way, but in the way, oh, this is the situation, and what can I do? Yeah, it's like, instead of it happens, a, but what now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Instead of expecting from the doctors that they heal you, you are your own doctor and get the discipline and have the discipline to, to practice daily for your health. You have mm -hmm. to practice daily. Yeah, this might be we are we are lazy, aren't we? Normally, so that might be the reason why people give over the responsibility to somebody else because they don't want to do the things which they don't really like to do. Uh, um, yes, of course, but uh, <laughs> now I'm curious. <laughs> If they would know, if the, if there are people talking to them, telling them what will happen, if they, they don't, they, they don't move uh, with uh, bad pictures for the future. They don't believe in this. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that they will become ill. They don't believe that there will be problems. Um, You have to you have to experience uh, your first sorrow. You have to experience your your first problem uh, until you are willing to move. But uh, on the other hand, our our MDs, our doctors, um, as you, as you told him. They, other doctors think they heal the patient. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, this is against all, all the knowledge of medicine because healing is one of the main actions, main reactions of the body. Every body heals at any time. Mm -hmm. We only ha can restrict the body to heal something. This is not uh, wonder knowledge or something, but if you cut your finger, it will heal you. You won't disgust it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but for, take for instance, diabetes. If something has diabetes, maybe the finger won't heal. So there's a restriction. But if somebody uh, lives a simple, healthy life without any any special uh, downs or lows. Um, the co the body will will have this this possibility to heal till an an, an high age. Yeah, healing is still a mystery, isn't it? Uh, they didn't find out what healing really is. No, no doctors, no medicine studies. They only know that certain substances have certain um, results. And yeah. as we go to substances, chemical substances, they have also some negative results. So it's always the choice. Do you take them or don't you take them? And as I like your position, you say, when I really need uh, normal, normal medicine, I, I go there. But when I don't need it, I don't do an operation just because, you know, uh, 
the doctor says it. <laughs> yeah. I first try out another another way. So for me, this is a sign of how can I say of psychological strength uh, to to take over this responsibility and to do the exercises even if you don't like to do it. If you would, or in the case of diabetes to not eat sugar anymore and not eat bread anymore to, to you know, to reduce the, the risk. Many people are so attached to their life as they are used it to be and can't imagine that they can change uh, their life. So I would like to ask you what, what was for you the, the moment where you really, or oh, oh, you were always open, that can be, and you have uh, the 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 habit of changing habits, <laughs> or you uh, had a moment of where you said, "Now, or I do that, or it gets gets worse and worse with me." And so you can build the the discipline and really do it. Okay. <laughs> you or me? You wanted to say something. Yeah, first. okay, Good. right, thank you. Uh, you mentioned psychological strength, Heidi, and for my part, I really had to develop that uh, at a young age. I come from a dysfunctional family, and I, and I had uh, three women in, in the female uh, ancestry who had breast cancer. And I, I took on uh, responsibility for that quite early. Um, I must say my, my mother um, showed me the path. Uh, she had the strength to, or the, the patience to show me the way to psychotherapy. And um, that... Uh, and, and I had a very uh, strong creative drive. So those two combined, I could really uh, get out of that chain of psychological contributions to breast cancer. And that, that's how I, I think I started uh, already at the age of 25 to uh, develop self-control and to develop, to develop self-efficacy. This is interesting because uh, my mother, for instance, she, the whole life, she feared to, to die of cancer because her mother died of cancer, but she didn't. <laughs> she had all, all sorts of things, but she didn't die with cancer. She died with 90 of, you know, she, she let herself go the last three, four years because she was not in the, this, um, this discipline to, to move her body. She was sort of sitting all the time and she just didn't want anymore. So mm. the last four or five years, more or less. So I wanted to say, if somebody fears cancer, it's not necessarily that they get it. But it's good when you have the awareness that there is a good probability that you get it, that you that you prepare yourself in a positive way to sort of avoid it, no? What did yeah. you do exactly? What did you do? Uh, did you have fear and you, you get rid of the fear or what was it? Of course I was afraid. Um, and... Uh, of course, as a child, I noticed some habits of these women which I didn't want to follow. And I wanted to live sort of more self-determined life. And uh, I wasn't always loved for that <laughs> uh, route in my life. Uh, I'm, I'm still sort of the crazy one in the family. <laughs> Yeah, but it uh, freed me of some patterns which would otherwise have led me to some protective mechanisms that don't allow love. And, and uh, my thing was I wanted to experience love. So, yeah, that's where I am now. <laughs> and that's great. And, and, uh, yeah, gratefully. Uh, 
have been for the last 20 years. <laughs> for me, the situation uh, started in 94, clearly, with my totally breakdown. Uh, and after this hospitalization, I, I tried to do to get my life back as I, uh, as I had it before. I wanted the same cigarettes, <laughs> uh, easy living. Uh, yeah. And after about three months, I, I experienced that won't happen that way. Um, and so I was very down. And my first day, for, you asked for the psychological day, was this, uh, that, I, that I go to a therapist. And she, uh, yeah, what did she do? Uh, oh, what she, did you do with the help of her? <laughs> no, no, she was able to stamp the story. I brought with me because uh, with the prognosis two to three days to live, uh, bad health situation, uh, psychologically get down because the old thing doesn't work anymore. Um, I don't think that I was the easy patient. Um, but she, she worked it out with me and um, one and a half year later, I, 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 had my, I had found my way. On the one hand, because of the psychological aid, and we all need aid at some time in our life. And on the other hand, um, going out there and, ex and, and, and experiment. I had no idea what I had to do, so I learned kinesiology. So I learned uh, something about uh, Chinese medicine, which I like up to now. I, I, I like Chinese medicine um, in all of their expressions. Acupuncture, uh, acupressure, uh, Chinese food, Chinese, because I like Chinese food very much. <laughs> Not only from the Chinese around the corner. Um, yeah, you need someone to, 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 work, to live, to work with. It, could, it must not be a, a, a therapist like I did. It could be your best friend. It could be even a stranger to you. But they have, to, they have to ask the right questions. They're un, uncomfortable questions for you to be, become aware, isn't it? They are not related to you, even, even the better way. So we are coaches. We are working with people. And in a single coaching session, we are not related to the people. We are not relatives to them. Uh, but we are, yeah, but we are connected. We are connected <laughs> to them. But this way we can we can ask the bad questions, the the, the questions, uh, the painful questions. Yeah, and some and the of ones... them are angry yeah. to be to be to be asked or to be talked that way. Yeah, or we get the feedback. Uh, how can you see that that quickly? Yes. But that's because you have a certain distance. And it's easy to see it from the distance. Yeah. And so you get help to, to see your own reality. And uh, it also helps and support to act, to, to change it into the direction you want to be. And this, with your profession, is more or less the same thing. You can use it for your health and you can use it for your business, for, for whatever, no? And so it's fruitful one for the other 
it's not dedicated to a, to a special purpose. You yeah. can do that in any direction. Yeah. And um, so in, in, in a small, in a short conclusion, you have to take the responsibility. You have to have the mental strengths and you can develop that. I think everyone can develop this strength. Um, you have to ask questions. You have to, 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 to ask for things you never had before. And if you don't know the question, just go out and try something. Sometimes uh, you don't even know why you're going out there and do something. And then you realize, okay, that was the missing link. That was that what I searched for within the last five years. Or that was something uh, which completes my tool set I need. And you have the ability to, to endure, to be an, able to practice every day. And, and for uh, that, it's good when you are in two, because the other one can remind you and put, get you up when you, when you are down a day. And, and uh, that's what I wanted to say. You need some sort of support, probably. <laughs> I, I don't know if that would work without us reminding each other of their duties, so to speak. Um, if I don't have the, the drive, uh, no, no reminder will help. So I've never ever reminded Harald of his breath exercises, nor have you reminded me of my Liebschebracht exercises. Uh, I, I, we don't know that. I can only say we, we don't know that, right? I imagine that you are already uh, strong and going on the way for, for a long time. But I, I was asking more for people who, who are confronted with a thing like that, an, an illness or a heavy challenge, and they are not used to, 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 to that. So what, what advice can you give them to, to come out of the hopelessness and depression and uh, really take it on and make, serious, make the decision? the right decision to do something for yourself instead of, you know, letting it go. So uh, these are two questions I try to answer now. Um, between us, we are too near to, 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 let, to, to treat the other to do exercises. If I, if I experience she's, she's tired, she won't do that. She won't lay down this evening and look into the TV, for instance, not to practice her, her knee. I never would ask her to, to go because I know she is tired and I like that she has it fine. And I, I like that she has her relaxation. I never would, would, change, would try to change that. Mm -hmm. An external coach would say, get up and go. <laughs> Sorry. Would he? <laughs> yeah. I, get, I, get up and go. I don't know. I, yeah, I think uh, probably they would ask uh, what's more important at the moment. These or, are the different styles of coating. <laughs> <laughs> probably they'd ask uh, what your healing image is. So what you'd like to do again, if your knee were completely healed or if you could go biking again. <laughs> you find any argument to lay down beside the TV? <laughs> Yeah, rather than, moment, rather, yes, than, rather yes. than to stand up, if I ask that. Yeah. So, so, so the, the stand up and do is, is that, it, it's something I say to myself. If, if, I, if I experience a day where, okay, I don't want to, to train today, I don't want to do, 
it's only 15 minutes in the in the morning on 50 minute about 15 to 30 minutes in the evening but it's time no i won't it would mm -hmm. be so much nicer okay. to sit here yeah that doesn't work that doesn't work no. so i have no. to sorry i have to 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 uh, Kick ass yourself. To kick ass myself. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You you describing my situation. <laughs> yeah, it's it's well I've yeah, heard that in the English realm very often. They they are saying I know that they say it. <laughs> Uh, I think you are describing that you are practically your own coach. You are negotiating with yourself, and then, oh, as if yeah. there was one part of you, the the child who doesn't really want to do that, and the other is the adult and says, "Okay, you better do it." Because I find myself often in the evening, do I still do qigong or don't I do it? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, you in the end. The last instance of decision is you. Those are you. you uh, there's nobody else who could decide. He, you, it, there are people who could decide over your head, but then you let them decide. And you give your own power away, your own you, being, you give yeah, away into the hand yeah, of yeah, others. It, and if you give your power away, you you uh, lacking of the power in your body, you're lacking of power in your health. Yeah. So uh, if you think, and that was the second part, that a doctor can heal you, then um, you didn't accept that your body is healing itself. And uh, medicine prescribed in the Western medicine can cure symptoms, of course. Can cure illnesses like uh, bacteria or, or viruses or anything like that. Um, but for the for the restoration, for the for the real uh, regeneration. regeneration in your in your life, restoring your 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 health, uh, that's only your decision. The, the medicine goes away, fades out, you took the last pill, and what's now? And of course, integral looking at medicine, medicine helps, or at healing helps. You always have that uh, inner uh, healing where you can take on, um, first lead yourself or uh, get yourself help with another person, be a therapist, a coach, whoever. So, and, and have exchange with like-minded people who share that view of self-healing capacity, of, of self-leadership, of self-efficacy. And I think uh, other people who have walked that path are very helpful. We need that example out in the world of people who have made major achievements in healing themselves, like people being paralyzed and walking or being people being on the deathbed uh, and, and standing up again. And we know all these stories from the ancient scriptures too. Uh, and, and it was not that Jesus said, I'll heal you. He said, you get up and you heal yourself. You'll see you can walk. Or like in uh, Richard Bach's Jonathan Livingston Seagull, when he's uh, gone all through his uh, development, uh, he teaches a lame uh, dove, not dove, uh, seagull to fly. And, and he said, just try. And, and then you, yeah, you, like you said, you ask questions you have never asked before or uh, you do things you have never done before. So it's a very explorative way of thinking and living. And of course, uh, you have these external systems like uh, 
health insurance and hospitals and doctors and yeah. And they are necessary, of course, because if I get a lung inflammation, I have often in winter time because my lung has its its, its destroyed area, so so bacteria can live there very very easy. Um, I need the medicine, I need the, uh, the the pills, I need the doctor, I need the hospital, but this is only for emergency. So even every surgery is emergency. If someone get uh, get a surgery because of cancer, for instance. Uh, they can't remove the cancer completely, but uh, in the moment they close the body, the question of surviving is that you can heal yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, Every surgery is a real impact on the body, so the body has to find this own way to overcome it and to to heal it, yeah. That's it. We'll come back and to Ulrike, what you said, uh, that's exactly what we want to do, what I want to do with this series, to interview people who give an example for healing, in this case, we're talking with you, conscious living, but also for dying and for accompanying people who, who die, because I think it's uh, such a taboo. <laughs> Illness is a taboo and dying is a taboo. So we try to eliminate it from our lives uh, and we, we better should get used to it and uh, find out the possibilities we have. Even dying is not just bing and then you go, you know. No. There are so many ways of, of for yourself when you die, but also for helping other people to, to have this period of the life as an, as an valuable experience, you know, and not to have the fear. So I really am grateful for you and the other people who come to the series to share their experiences because it's exactly what you say. We need to have the information and the experience from other people. We have to have role models to get more courage to try it ourselves, you know, and yeah. very nice. Uh, Ulrike, I wanted to ask you in the German um, conversation, you, you had a chart and you explained so nicely uh, the, the mindset things. Would you like to do that here too? Because I really, really liked it. Do you have okay. it here with you? Then I'll have to do a little drawing. <laughs> yeah, okay. So okay. <laughs> maybe Harald talks about what it is and uh, yeah. while you are drawing. Ah, we still have it here. We, I still, we, do still, it. we still have it here. Ah, okay. So we can show it right away. I, okay. I, 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 and can explain it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Readable? So it's uh, like a stone tower, a balanced tower, right? The bigger stones uh, at the bottom and the smaller ones up there, though it doesn't look like it here, but uh, that's the idea of it. Uh, and our, our life needs to be in balance. And we think, a good way to do that is to, to do it from top to bottom or bottom up. But uh, when we work with ourselves and with people, we try to find their guiding star, so their purpose in life or their uh, life's work or so something that's uh, their highest self. In this case of, uh, of illness and uh, living with an illness, overcoming an illness, this would be the healthy state, this North Star, to be yeah. healthy and living well. If the, if the picture you have of yourself is ill, mm -hmm. what you really think you will get, if the picture you have of yourself is healthy, all of your movements inside the body and your mind will work towards this, this, this state. So uh, this is the really state we want to achieve. This is where we want to go to. This is what we will want to be. Yeah, and it's not only your healthy state as I know you. Uh, it's also how, how can I 
be in the world and serve the world. So it, it's more than just being well for yourself. It's, uh, yeah, how, how can I be and serve in yeah. the world, right? And if you have your guiding star, then you're able to attract and find the people uh, you want to work with uh, and to have exchange with and to serve, right? So you find your clients, your partners, your teachers, uh, everyone who supports your uh, guiding star, right? That's how you build your system. You're not so dependent on your uh, uh, family anymore where you origin from. Uh, so that would be looking backwards. Um, you're more able to stay present and to work out the future. And that's a very crucial point, I think. Um, as long as you haven't sorted out the or freed yourself from um, belief systems from your original family, you're not free for all the options in, in the now and, and the options you can create for the future. So uh, there you can uh, have a good look. Uh, where's my mind going? Is my mind going to the past, to the present, or to the future? You can do that at any moment. Yep. So I have to rearrange my hands around it. <laughs> so if you want to be a creator of your own life, you, you have to get to the present. With a, with a clear picture of yourself in the future. Or possibility of pictures yeah. in the future because they, they may change, the vision may develop. Yeah. I think this is one of the crucial yeah. parts today that people don't have enough clear picture uh, of the future because it seems to sort of, you know, we hear about climate change and we hear about, uh, it's all sort of depressing and we don't find jobs, young people don't find jobs. And so it's really a, a, a challenge to have a clear picture of your own mm -hmm. future. So. And yeah. there I can chime in, there, there is uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson, um, who has done a future authoring program, where you can write about that, and uh, past authoring and present authoring, pro, pro, I think selfauthoring.com uh, is the website, where you people write for the first time maybe by the questions, guided questions about their lives, and they have done studies about it at, uh, always in university and the dropout rate uh, is 25 to 30 percent less in the first year when yeah. people Absolutely. begin to yeah. develop their vision. So I think it's a very good thing to do to, yeah. to get clear wherever you are in your life. But let's go on with the yeah. book I uh, see there. I will, to, 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 I like the short way to shorten things a little bit. Um, if you know your guiding star, if you have the proper communities you live in, your mind, your thinking, your heart, your emotions, and your body will follow. And also your material situation. This is not a question of uh, magic thinking, no. It's a question of positioning. It's a question of taking up direction. It's a question of doing in this direction. Um, our brain is so, so, so focusable. Um, you know the experiment, you want to, to have a blue uh, Volkswagen, and if you go out to the street, you see many blue Volkswagen. <laughs> we never saw blue Volkswagen before. in the past, before. But now you're looking at it. Um, so um, it's the same if you have a clear picture. You see how to get there. 
Yeah, you can make plans. You can make plans. You can get the tools you need. And it seems to be that in society today, it goes the other way around. They think when I have a car and a, a house and when I have lots of money, then everything else will come by itself. But this mm -hmm. is exactly the other way around, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. you cannot yeah. get a goal from only having money. <laughs> you can put it into alcohol and then, ooh, I don't know. If this is <laughs> On the other hand, it's, it's, it's equal. Where to start in all of pyramid? If you start in the emotion, if you start in the head, if you start in the body, it influences the other areas. So if you start with the body, your emotions will follow. If you get better by health, you will be, have better emotions, better thoughts, maybe better friends, and a better vision of your future. Yeah. And often with clients, we can't start with a guiding star. We have uh, to pick them up from where they are. And if they want to find their ideal work, uh, then, then we look at, at, at that uh, level first, usually, because that's what they see. They see job advertisements, they see job interviews, they see the, um, the usual procedure, right? There is their house, there is their flat, there is their love, there are the children, there you no know, children are also there, but uh, the car, for instance or the, the mortgage or yeah. whatever, right? And, and then we can move to, to the, their uh, competences, to their best, to their brilliant competences. Then we can move to that uh, consciousness tower in their interior. And then we can move to their uh, value, memes or relationships they really appreciate so and and then we can uh, they can find their vocation so who is watching that now uh, what we are doing you are talking about the business and creating the life but the same thing you can do with your your health yes. so transport it to the to the uh, as, as we talked before there is no no uh, Direction given. The field of practice is the same. It, yeah. you, you, you start with <laughs> your consciousness and expand to. So, to would you say even to, to, to get a better job, you need physical practice and you need to open your heart and you need yes, to course. surround yourself with the right people? Yeah. Yes, of course. Exactly the yeah. same thing, isn't it? Isn't it great? <laughs> so many <laughs> possibilities we have and we never explore them. I well, yeah, yeah so, so we only have one guiding star, we only have one vocation. And um, maybe we only live a part of it, but the whole vocation, the whole guiding star is there. Maybe we can't see the whole vocation up to now. And develop the clear end, the clear side on it within the next months, years. I don't know, but it is there. So if people start with us, we can tell them one for sure: you have a guiding star, you have a vocation. Mm -hmm. This is interesting for me. So your idea is that the vocation is independent from what we want consciously it is something given to you or is it something no, 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 no. no. It, it's um it's a it's a result of all the factors you have ever experienced of all what is in you with all your talents with all your knowledge with all your experience with all your conscious and unconscious life you lived up to that that forms something in you and um, it's more a question of getting the essence of that yeah. it's the essence of that yes and it, if, if you feel that it's it's the, the, the proper way it's, it's the way 
uh, the healthy way, the, the, the clever way, the, the, the way you can earn money. Um, it's good for you and you, build, can, you can start doing that. So you have to, to, to become aware of all your conscious, even if we, we have conscious, uh, um, no, I'm hanging. <laughs> what, 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 what are you looking for? Uh, if you are conscious about your 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 vegan skills, skills I, thank you, thank you. <laughs> your skills, even if you know uh, about your life up to now, there are many things you have forgotten already, which are still working in you, which are still driving you to. different goals than you have in mind and uh, to find a, a guiding star is it's like a sculpture you can form it it's your guiding star but you can only form it with that you are given and it's more about reducing it and it is reducing <laughs> it's like Michelangelo said just out of, 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 of the stone. As it was asked, how did you find your David? So it had, was already the, there. It was already in the model. Yeah. I yeah. only had to free the form. Yeah. And I think what's so um, helpful about knowing one's essence or one's guiding star, there could be different um, professional settings then uh, where you could live your essence. The outer form is not that important anymore because you you are the essence and you bring the essence everywhere you go. So, so it's an expression. Uh, what you are living is an expression of your essence. Yes. Uh, you wouldn't uh, allow to deny it anymore because you really feel it's your essence and that's what makes you live. And you... Just go with it everywhere. So you have no difference between the inner habit and the outer habit, the shown behavior, the private behavior, the public behavior. It's this here is an habit. outside expression of my essence, this little thing here, yes. when I saved it. And <laughs> <laughs> he's so still cute. not yet <laughs> completely healthy. He's, he's, he's perfect. Healthy. Yeah, he needs he to. What he wants. <laughs> was like this small small and was had an encounter with a car and has a uh, the, the jaw is completely distorted but he can eat now and you know he is full of life despite yeah. of what has happened to him you know he's completely and he wants to to play now he is playing with my arm you know uh -huh. sometimes he's <laughs> he's writing emails and <laughs> he's getting impatient with you <laughs> yeah so if this is the expression of my essence, I would say my essence would be some, the calling is to give out what I have learned and take, take care for, for life, I would say. Mm -hmm. Maybe for cats and for dogs, but also for people and for, I'm very <laughs> interested in, in helping in some way, you know, but helping in a good way, not, not pushing my help on others, but allowing mm -hmm. them to be themselves at the same time. Well, how do it, you mean that? have a difference between how they treat yourself than they treat others. Uh, you maybe feel inside yourself. You have to treat yourself harder than you would try, you would uh, force others to do. For instance, you have to, to, to be the same with you and with the others. There uh -huh. is um, uh, Jordan Peterson in his 12 Rules for Life. Uh, one rule is treat yourself as if you were somebody worth caring for. Ah, so, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because we often do it for others instead for ourselves, we neglect ourselves. That might be a little bit a result of the culture, but I don't know. Anyway, I don't mm -hmm. want to discuss that now. That would be another topic. But uh -huh. And I think we are at the top of the hour and we should wrap it a little bit up maybe as a 
as the end, I would like you to say some word to somebody who is facing a similar situation and the essence of your experience, what you could tell them. Just, just sit down and stop and uh, look at you and uh, try to imagine how the best is you can be. Try to make only a vision, make an imagination and uh, keep this imagination in your mind for about half an hour daily. You will see it, the first movement will occur. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, what a question. <laughs> um, uh, I think there's no situation in life that can't be healed. Uh, even if it were uh, war, loss of people, uh, unloving parents, an own addiction, whatever. Uh, I think at any time of your life, you can find people who can be your allies and you can heal. Wonderful. And at the quintessence is take over responsibility for your life and look out. You will be surprised that there is a lot of situations and a lot of people and a lot of tools with which you can direct your life to the better. So true. That's <laughs> absolutely true. My final <laughs> statement. So thank you very much. And let's talk another time about all these other topics which have opened up. Thank okay. you. And thank you, you are listening to this uh, recording later. Please subscribe for the Wisdom Factory. And if you have something really valid to offer, you might think it's not so valid, but you, you can see what we are talking about and maybe it is valid. Do connect with us and we can talk together and give it out into the world for the inspiration and support of others in a situation as it was yours. Okay? The wisdomfactory.net, use the contact form. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>